Okay, so the basics. So crosstalk is an unintended coupling between the adjacent circuits of your board. And here the aggressor signal overpowers the victim signal, even if they're not connected. So this coupling primarily occurs through capacitive and inductive coupling. So crosstalk occurs in your design when, when two traces run closely parallel to each other on the same layer and uh, ground planes are placed distant from the signal planes. And if there are any split planes or splits in your grounds. So be careful of all those things. And yesterday I saw a design that we built um, two mil trace in space, all parallel lines. And while the technology of manufacturing is impressive to have parallel traces uh, manufactured like that with traditional PCB process, I don't think it was a good design. I think everyone can learn from these types of things. Sorry. All right. So near end and far end crosstalk. So near end crosstalk or next and far end crosstalk or fext are categorized based on the location where the crosstalk is detected. Next is the noise that is picked up by the victim trace near the driver end. And once next is induced, the victim signal will start traveling in the opposite direction as the aggressor signal. And a victim trace experiences fext when the electromagnetic field generated by an aggressor signal induces noise near the receiver end. The induced fext pulse interacts with the lump inductance of the victim interact, interconnect and leads to ringing. So, we're going to do a tool demo, I think, at this point on calculating next and facts using our impedance tools. And then once 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 that's done, we'll come back with you know all of these topics. Um, you know, just as a side, if you haven't seen our tools or used our tools, I highly recommend them. They're pretty fantastic, and they're very powerful to help designers achieve what they're trying to achieve and and, and they're free and it's us giving back to the community and uh, I would highly recommend taking advantage of those tools. And they're for you. So, you know, on the forum, when we launch it, you can also give us fee asynchronous feedback on how to make the tools better. So we're always trying to, trying to do that. Okay, hand it off to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, the Sierra C circuits impedance calculator uh, uses the 2D numerical solution of Maxwell's equations for PCB transmission lines and renders fairly accurate results suitable for use in circuit board manufacturing and engineering analysis. Uh, this impedance calculator uh, is integrated with signal loss and crosstalk calculators. Uh, our impedance calculators has 82 impedance models with multiple geometries, such as the coated microstrip, the uncoated microstrip, embedded microstrip, and the strip line. Um, and each of these geometries can be chosen as a single-ended, a differential pair, or a coplanar. Um, so let us take an example of a coated microstrip in a differential pair. Uh, you can see that the Coated microstrip differential pair is uh, displayed here. The tools are displayed in a normal and a composite model. Uh, I have opened the calculator here and entered the values here, in input values, just to save some time. So you can see that the geometry that has been selected is displayed here. You can use this drop down to change the units of your desired choice. And uh, you can fill in the dialectic information here. Uh, for trace information, we put in the delta W, 
uh, the trace thickness and you can either put the trace separation or the sum of the trace uh, width and the separation. For example, let us take 12 mils here and a target differential impedance of maybe 100 ohms. Uh, for the trace width, click on calculate W. So you can see that along with the trace width, there are other parameters that will be calculated here, such as the coupling coefficient, the odd even mode impedances, the propagation delays, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, this tool is also, along with the signal loss and the S-parameter calculators, it is integrated with the crosstalk calculator here. Uh, for crosstalk calculator, uh, the near end crosstalk uh, is highly dependent on the uh, separation between the traces and the far end crosstalk depends predominantly on the trace length uh, and the rise time. Uh, so let us take a value here. For example, let us take two as a trace length and a signal rise time of 200 picoseconds and maybe a signal voltage of two volts and click on uh, calculate crosstalk. Uh, so the near end crosstalk results and the far end crosstalk results are displayed here. Uh, if suppose I increase this uh, trace length into three inches uh, and click on calculate crosstalk, uh, the far end crosstalk also increases. Uh, also, if suppose I decrease this signal rise time to maybe 100 picoseconds uh, and calculate the crosstalk, uh, we can see that the noise voltage here has increased. Uh, so we can conclude uh, that the faster transition, if the fa transition is faster, then the voltage is higher, and therefore the fast, uh, far end crosstalk uh, is higher. Uh, for a slower transition, it has a lesser impact. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Let me share my screen again. So what strikes you first uh, when it comes to mitigating EMI and crosstalk in your PCB design? Uh, if you can interact with us, that'd be great. Some of these things are your placement of your layers, routing strategically your sensitive traces, grounding techniques, component placement strategies, and EMI shielding techniques. There's no correct answer, but honestly, they're all important. And so we're gonna talk about them all. If there's one more important to you than the other that you'd like to know about or learn about, please, please ask or chat.